So today I'm talking about a P0447 code, what it is and how you can go about fixing it. And so what is a P0447 code? Well, it's an evaporative emission control system vent valve solenoid circuit open. And so what does this mean? Well, basically vehicles have what's called an EVAP system that takes all the gas vapors from the gas tank and feeds them up to the engine to be burnt away so they don't escape into the atmosphere. This is for emissions. But when you get this P0447 code, the computer's seeing a problem with one of these EVAP components mainly with the vent valve and so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why and if you do go to work on a vehicle evap system it's always a good idea to get a diagram or a schematic for that evap system since there can be some differences inside these evap systems they can't be designed differently the components can have a different name things like this so it's always a good idea to get a diagram of that evap system for that specific vehicle that way you know for sure what's going on but the basics of how all these evap systems work is that the gas vapors, they're going to leave the gas tank, they're going to go through a hose over to what's called a charcoal canister. And the charcoal canister is kind of like storage for the gas vapors. And either built into the charcoal canister or located right next to it is going to be what's called a vent valve. And the vent valve does different things. The computer can send it a signal and close it and test the system and be sure it's holding pressure. Also, when you go to get gas and you're filling up the gas tank, all that gas going into the gas tank is going to push those gas vapors into the EVAP system. And this can overload the system and it can cause the gas nozzle to start clicking off because all those gas vapors aren't going to have any place to go. So to prevent this from happening, that vent valve is a normally open valve. All the gas vapors can go through the charcoal canister, which is full of tiny little charcoal pellets, and flow out that vent valve. If you're filling up your gas tank and the nozzle keeps clicking off, that's a common symptom when that vent valve gets stuck shut. But then the gas vapor is going to leave the charcoal canister. They're going to go up to the engine compartment and located inside the engine compartment somewhere is going to be another valve called the purge valve. And basically the purge valve just stays shut when the engine's not running. But then when the engine is running, at some point the computer is going to send it a signal to open. Then all the gas vapors are going to go into the engine to be burnt away. And so that's a real basic overview of what's going on inside of an EVAP system. Like I said, be sure to get a diagram for your vehicle to know for sure what's going on. But when you get this P0447 code, the computer is seeing a problem with this vent valve. And so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why. And so what would be some possible causes of a P0447 code? Well, the main things that's going to cause this is either that vent valve's gone bad and needs to be replaced, or the wiring going to the vent valve, that there's some kind of issue going on inside the wiring, like an open or short or something like that. And so there's some different ways to go about troubleshooting this. The first thing to do is to locate that vent valve. It's very common for these to be built into the charcoal canister. Although sometimes they could be separate, they could be a different component from the charcoal canister. But if they are, they will be located right next to it. And the charcoal canister is going to be located up underneath the vehicle by the gas tank somewhere. It'll vary a little bit on its exact location, but it will be located up underneath the vehicle by the gas tank somewhere. And so the first thing to do is go locate that vent valve and find out if it is built into that charcoal canister. Keep in mind, there could be different names for this. So for example, Toyota's, they have what's called a leak detection pump and the vent valve is built into that, which is this component right here. So like I said before, there can be some differences going on. These components can be named differently, things like that. Once you locate that vent valve on your particular vehicle, there's some different ways to go about testing it. Basically, this is just a simple valve that opens and shuts when the computer sends it a signal. And it's a normally open valve. So that means when there's no power going to it, it should be open. And then when power does go to it, it should close. So if you locate it, you can try to blow through it. And if you can't blow through it, you know it's stuck shut. If it is open, you can apply power to it and see if it closes. You can also test the wiring going to it. It's usually 12 volts that's going to these. So you can't go and check the wiring. If you do go to check the wiring, it's a good idea to get wiring schematics for that particular vehicle. That way you know for sure what's going on. You know, one thing to keep in mind about this is that you will need a good OBD2 scan tool to send a command to the computer to close that vent valve before voltage goes to it. So be sure to keep that in mind. Also, it's a good idea to check for any blown fuses or anything like this. It can't be confusing on which fuse does what or what's going on. Quite often, these EVAP components are all combined with other components, and it can really vary on what's going on and which fuse does what. So again, wiring schematics can really help you out with that. But the first thing that could cause this is a bad vent valve or the wiring going to the vent valve. And the next thing that could cause this is a bad charcoal canister. And basically, there might not be no problem with that vent valve. But if there's some kind of issue going on with the charcoal canister, if it gets all clogged up and no gas vapors can go through it, then that's going to cause problems. Or if a component gets damaged for some reason, like some kind of debris comes up underneath the vehicle and hit it, then that's going to cause problems. For this reason, a lot of people, when the vent valve is built into the charcoal canister, 
they'll just replace the whole charcoal canister along with the vent valve. But keep in mind, you can't test that vent valve. You can't test the wiring going to it and be sure there's no problem there. And depending on the vehicle, sometimes you could get that vent valve separate and just replace it. Again, there's going to be differences. So you have to do a little bit of research. But the next thing that could cause this is a bad charcoal canister. And the next thing on the list is going to be that there's some other problem going on inside the system that's just stopping that vent valve from working correctly, that another component's gone bad. So the computer just thinks that vent valve's not working correctly, but it is. And so this would be something like a bad gas cap. That gas cap is a part of the EVAP system. It needs to seal correctly or else it could cause a leak. There can also be like an EVAP leak or a purge valve or the fuel tank pressure sensor. The computer's getting its information from this pressure sensor. So if that pressure sensor goes bad, that computer might just be getting bad information back. But usually when one of these other components go bad, when there's another issue going on, usually you're going to get another code. So for example, if you also got like a P0453 code, evaporative emission system pressure sensor switch high, then in that case, it's a good idea to go check out that fuel tank pressure sensor and be sure there's no issues going on there. Because the next things that could cause this is some other components failed and that's stopping that vent valve from working. But usually when that happens, you're going to get another code. So if you are getting another code, be sure to pay attention to that. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0447 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.